Alright guys, uh, just here with a quick video showing you how you can separate a kick drum and a bass. Uh, I've got this track that I've been working on. Uh, I've got the kick here and the bass and I've had to bounce everything else down into a stereo file because I was using quite a few instances of Diva and those open with the screen capture software uh, computer wasn't having it at all so that's why you can only see three tracks here okay so this is the track As you can hear there, the kick is kind of subby. So I've been using this uh, big kick plugin from Plugin Boutique, and yeah, it's got a nice fat bottom end which I kind of like. And I really wanted to work with this bass. So the bass is an instance of Diva, and I've put this uh, patch together. I'll do a video on how I made the patch as well at some point. Um, so yeah, as you can hear, they're kind of crossing over a little bit, making things a little bit muddy in the bottom end. So, the other day, I downloaded these uh, Melda production plugins. I've just got the 14 day free trial. And I've been going through them all to see what they can all do and yeah, pretty good like. So the first thing I'm going to do is get this M Multi Analyzer. I'm going to throw an instance on the drums. Take this thick line off the kit. Change the colour to red. Red's always good. Oh, red is always good for a kick drum. Um, let's label it in here. Kick. Take the normalize off and you can see the kick coming through the uh, frequency analyzer there. Um, and then I'm going to do the same with the bass channel. Let's get M multi analyzer. Put it over the bass. Change the colour. Get rid of the thick line. And name it bass. So, the first thing I, could, I should say really when it comes to kick drum and bass separation. The most important thing really is your choice of kick drum and your choice of bass. Now, with the kick, I got one of the presets and I tweaked it. And with the bass patch, I made that from scratch. So as you can see in the analyzer, we've got the kick drum coming through in red and the bass coming through in blue. Um, and they're quite separated as it is, but you'll see just in this area here, there's a bit of a crossover, and this is where the muddiness is coming from. So let's try and sort that out. So again, I'm going to stick with these Melder plugins, and I'm going to go to the M Auto Dynamic, and then on my bass channel, I'm just going to throw it in before the analyzer. Right, so first things first, my kick, uh, using this big kick plugin. Now, one of the cool features of this and a big time saver is that you can tune your kicks. So I've got my kick tuned to an E because that's the root note of my song. So that is something that comes in handy here. So I'm going to double click on band 2 and click here 
here to open up the options and I'm under general and frequency here when I click that you'll see we get a keyboard I'm going to move this across so you can see back up so we've got a keyboard and I'm actually going to click on the E note here and then the tune is up as uh, 41.2034 if we press the uh, tick you'll see that's moved so now this is in the exact position the exact frequency that the kick drum is coming through at next step of this process is I'm going to duplicate this kick track just by highlight highlighting it press ctrl D and duplicate so now just got the exact same thing coming through here take the analyzer off that now I'm going to use this second kick as a sidechain activator so it's going to be like a, a ghost kick so label that SC, open the in out properties. On the output of this, I have a go into my base and then in the second drop down menu to the sidechain M auto dynamic option. Right, so nothing was well. The output of this uh, second kick won't be coming through the master like everything else. Instead, it's just rooted straight into the M multi analyzer. Not the M multi analyzer, what am I on about? The M auto dynamic. Okay. So let's play this. Open this up. And activate the side chain. dynamics pull this down now as you can see here every time the kick hits it's pushing down the frequency of the bass and that's as I said before the exact spot that the kick is hidden so, just gonna turn down the cue on it turn this level gain control down Just so you can see visually what's going on there, I'm going to open up the analyzer again and do a before and after with the EQ. Okay. Bypass the EQ. Okay, so you can really hear the, the subs of the kick coming through when I've got the EQ on. So, yeah, there's loads of cool features in this EQ as well. I'll show you something else do. At the bottom here you've got this harmonic section. Uh, what you can do is affect all the harmonics of uh, this frequency here. Like 
I'll show you what what I can do rather than tell you. So yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm sure you can see the um, advantages of that and one of the things you can do with that feature. You've also got this soft saturation knob here. Which just adds some saturation to the uh, to the EQ. And giving it the feel of uh, a hardware type EQ. So, uh, just as a final touch, I'm going to give the bass character. Sorry about all these cutouts. Let's try again. So with the EQ and without, so let's just hear that in the mix. Okay, so there you have it, a uh, way of separating a kick drum and a bass.